evening. And a very warm welcome to our service this evening. It's a wonderful privilege to be here in person amongst you all. Let us take a moment to still our hearts as we prepare to worship God. Let us pray. God most high, your only Son embraced the weakness of our flesh to give us the power to become your children. Grant us a spirit of wisdom to know how rich is the glory you have made our own and how great the hope to which we are called in Jesus Christ, your word made flesh, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, in the splendor of eternal light, God forever and ever. Amen. We stand, if we are able, to sing hymn 489, hymn 489, Come Down, O Love Divine.
hear these words from the book of Lamentations. The Lord's love is surely not exhausted, nor hath his compassion failed. They are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. Let us pray. God of all wisdom and grace, it is because your love has first come down that we can draw near to you this evening. It is because we long for you to kindle our hearts anew that we come in worship and adoration. And yet we are ever aware of our shortcomings and of our need for healing and forgiveness. We were made to know you and to hear your voice. And yet we confess that so often we close our ears to what you are saying. We were made to bear your image, and yet there are times when our lives reflect our own agendas and desires. We were made to see our world and our neighbour as you see them, and yet we confess that we often harbour bitterness towards others. Forgive us, we pray. Lift the burden of guilt from our shoulders. Take the heaviness from our hearts that we may be free to worship you in spirit and in truth. We thank you that as we confess our sins, you are faithful and gracious to forgive us and to set our feet on the right path. And so renew us in your eternal grace. Grant us your peace. May our lives shine with the light and love of your presence. Eternal God, your Son Jesus Christ healed the sick and restored them to wholeness of life. Look with compassion on the anguish of the world and by your power make whole all peoples and nations. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We stand, if we are able, and sing hymn 485, hymn 485, Dear Lord and Father of Mankind.
be seated. The first reading this evening is taken from the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 to 5, the creation of the universe. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was a vast waste, darkness covered the deep, and the Spirit of God hovered over the surface of the water. God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light was good, and he separated light from darkness. He called the light day, and the darkness night. So evening came, and morning came. It was the first day. Amen. The New Testament reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 12, reading verses 9 and 10. But his answer was, My grace is all you need, for my power is greatest when you are weak. I am most happy then to be proud of my weaknesses in order to feel the protection of Christ's power over me. I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and difficulties for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Amen. The third reading is from St. John's, the Gospel of St. John's, chapter 5, verses 1 to 6. After this, Jesus went to Jerusalem for the religious festival. Near the sheep gate in Jerusalem, there is a pool with five porches. In Hebrew, it is called Bethzatha. A large crowd of six people were lying in the porches the blind, the lame, and the paralyzed. A man was there who had been ill for 38 years. Jesus saw him lying there, and he knew that the man had been ill for such a long time. So he asked him, do you want to get well? Amen. May God bless us these readings of his work, and may his name be all the praise and the glory. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Some years ago, whilst traveling in El Salvador in Central America and visiting some churches with a Catholic bishop friend of mine, I was struck by the vibrancy and the life of the congregations that I met. Guitars, flutes, stringed instruments, and the sound of the piano filled the air as we worshipped together. People shared food after the service, and there was a real sense that the church was central to the community. And I remember asking my friend, why was it that the churches that we visited seemed to be so full with people, when in Europe and across the global north, the church has been suffering from severe decline, no longer central to society, but very much on the margins? He said to me, that in a society torn apart by violence and suffering, the church is a place of healing and a place of restoration, a place of hope, 
a place that offers a different narrative to the narratives of fear and exclusion that permeate and destroy our world. A place of peace in a world buffeted by the storms of life. In our Gospel passage from John chapter 5, we read the story of a man who was sitting at the pool of Bethesda in Jerusalem. It was a place, as we read, where all who needed healing would go. And when an angel of the Lord went down to the pool and stirred the waters, those who stepped in were healed, were made whole. But the man we read about had no one to help him into the pool. He'd been waiting there for 38 years. Imagine that. 38 years of waiting, of longing, of hoping that somebody would be moved with compassion and help him into the healing waters. But nobody does until Jesus comes to him and asks him that question in verse 6. Do you want to be healed? Or as it says in the King James Version, do you want to be made whole? And Christ comes to us tonight and he asks us the same question. Do you want to be made whole? to be made whole from the fragmentation and despair we feel in our lives, to be made whole from the brokenness of relationships and hurts that still wound us, to be made whole from lives that struggle with feelings of unworthiness, to be made whole from the anguish that comes from comparing ourselves with others, from living our lives in the expectations and opinions of others. Wherever we are on our journey, Christ comes to us with a desire to make us whole. And it is a question that not only comes to us, but to our broken and hurting world, a world that is beset by structural sin by structural injustice, a world beset by conflict, a world gripped by greed, which condemns so many to poverty and to inhumane living conditions, a world where ecological devastation threatens the very future of life on this fragile planet, a world in the grip of fear and of loneliness, a world where many do not know what it is like to live within the community of friendship. Christ calls out over the broken wastelands of our world and invites us to come to find healing and wholeness in him. And just like the Spirit hovered over the waters of chaos at the beginning of time, bringing created order out of the watery depths, as we read of in our Old Testament reading from Genesis 1, Christ is with us here today, longing to bring healing and wholeness to our broken world. As you know, I've spent nearly four years, the past four years, in Israel-Palestine. In fact, I go back tomorrow. So thank you for making this possible tonight and for coming out on an autumnal evening. But Israel-Palestine, and many of you may have visited there, is of course a place of intractable conflict and injustice. And one of the privileges of being the minister there is that you get to meet people from every sector of society. I've met with communities from across the social and political divides, with rabbis in synagogues and sharing Shabbat meals in Jerusalem, with politicians, 
with religious leaders from all of the Abrahamic faiths, with Bedouins in the South Hebron Hills who have suffered from house demolitions, with Palestinian families in Gaza who have lost everything, with Jewish and Israeli parents who have lost children and loved ones to terrorist violence. And of course, it's just one of the many places in our world where suffering and conflict prevail. And at times, it is difficult to believe that there is anything that we can do in the face of such injustice. The church there is small, almost insignificant in terms of its numbers, very much on the margins of society. And yet, it is Christ's body here on earth. Our epistle reading from 2 Corinthians 12 should give us hope, for it reminds us that God's power is perfected in weakness. Indeed, this lies at the heart of the Christian message of the Christian gospel. For how could a crucified Jewish rabbi, nailed to a Roman imperial cross, change the course of history? And in going to the cross, to the place of death and destruction, and by responding in forgiving love to the very people who are torturing him, he teaches us a better way, a new way of being in the world, a way that loves beyond the barriers and the walls that we put between ourselves and others, a love that reaches out even to our enemies in forgiveness and in love, a love which our world needs as much today as it did back then. And of course, it is not only in the places of conflict and war where the church is needed, but here, here in Cowell, here in Scotland. For do we not live in a society when many, where many are lonely and forgotten? Do we not live in a society where domestic violence, drug abuse and despair destroy the lives of the most vulnerable? Do we not live in a society that has become too individualistic, where it is each for their own? The church needs to provide a space of healing. It needs to help those who are seeking for wholeness. It needs to help those who are waiting into the healing waters of God's love. We may be small in number in the Church of Scotland. We may be on the margins of society and weak and even foolish in the eyes of the world in which we live. But we worship a God who humbled himself and took on human flesh, emptied himself of all but love, and died as a common criminal on a cross. And thus associating himself with all those who we crucify and cast out down through the centuries, reminding us that God is on the side of the poor, of the dejected, of the crushed, of the marginalized. Our world needs to hear the gospel message today as never before. And we, his church, are called to embody this message of transformational hope. Scotland needs the church to be a community of love and of compassion, reaching out to the lonely, to those on the, on the edge of society, reaching out to the hurting, to all those who are longing for a place to find peace and wholeness. Saint Teresa of Avila, a Spanish nun living in 16th century Spain, penned these words. Christ has no body now but yours, no hands, no feet on earth but yours. Yours are the eyes with which he looks, compassion on this world. Yours are the feet with which he walks to do good. 
Yours are the hands with which he blesses all the world. May we, by God's grace, open ourselves up to him afresh this evening. May we come to the one who is the fountain of life and of healing. May we drink deeply from the waters of his grace so that we and our world may be changed. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. Amen. stand as we are able to sing hymn 739, hymn 739, The Church's One Foundation. devotion for you. Use them, we pray, for the extension of your kingdom 
in this place. Amen. Please be seated. We now bring our prayers of intercession for our world. Let us pray. Gracious God, we bring you our prayers for our world. We recognize that we live in a world which has not learnt the ways of peace, which sees so much hatred and division, so much violence and pain, so much loss and devastation. We feel overwhelmed and powerless in the face of such suffering. We pray for the situation in Afghanistan, especially for the women and girls suffering under such a terrible regime. Strengthen all who are working for justice and for women's rights in that nation and be near to all who are suffering. We pray for those devastated by war and by ecological disaster, for those suffering from exploitation and from hunger, for those stuck in circumstances beyond their control, Bring your comfort, we pray, reminding them that you are with us in our suffering. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We also pray for those closer to home in our own communities, for those for whom life is a daily struggle, for those who are beset with loneliness, for those struggling with a debilitating illness, for those for whom life has lost all joy. For those who feel uncertain about what the future may hold. God of all comfort and compassion, be near to all who suffer. Enfold them with your love. Fill them to overflowing with your joy. And strengthen them to lead lives of peace and of service. That the lives of those around them will be transformed by your grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for your church. Raise her up to boldly proclaim the liberation of the gospel. Help her to be a beacon of light, a sign of hope to this generation. May she always stand with those who are crushed, dejected and oppressed. May your church always stand up for justice, and seek the peace that only you can bring. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so may your kingdom come in our lives, in our communities, in our world. May your will be done through us and beyond us. Give us the strength and the faith to always pray until the kingdoms of this world become the kingdom of your Son. O oh God, Lead us from death to life, from falsehood to truth. Lead us from despair to hope, from fear to trust. Lead us from hate to love, from war to peace. Let peace fill our hearts, our world, our universe. Amen. We stand to sing our final hymn this evening, hymn 159, hymn 159. Lord for the years.
now go into the world with healing love and compassion. Bind up the brokenhearted, comfort the lonely, and bring hope wherever you go. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you now and forevermore.